A viewer recently commented asking me for some advice on how to move undetected through areas in the older AC games, and since the comment was made on an AC2 video, I'll tailor this advice toward SEO's games in particular. We'll start with AC2 and move forward as advice gets, you know, more relevant to a particular game. So 1. Use higher factions. So many players don't do this, but they're actually super broken in AC2 especially. Courtesans and thieves are really strong for stealth and for removing guard presence from an area. Mercenaries? Less useful, in general, but they can still fight people and lure them over to them. So, courtesans and thieves, very good, very strong, pretty much overpowered. Hire them, use them. 2. Smoke Bomb. This item is so strong for stunning entire groups of guards and walking right past them. You don't actually have to kill everyone in an area when you play these games, or most stealth games, honestly. Your objective is rarely to kill everyone in a room, for example. It usually involves moving through an area that soldiers are guarding so that you can steal something, reach a point in the world, or kill a specific person. That means guards other than your objective are usually not required kills, they're just standing in your way, and you can easily move through them by stunning them for a long time. Stunning guards with smoke leaves no corpses behind, but more importantly, dropping smoke and moving forward is way faster and costs less time than doing hidden blade animations on all of them. If someone's guarding a checkpoint, an alleyway, or a bank with a codex page in it, just walk up to them, but not right in their face because they'll shove you, and drop smoke at your feet. The cloud will spread over a wide area and leave everyone stunned for a while. You can actually combine this tip with the previous one, to enter and exit banks without detection, which many players will appreciate because banks seem to be one of the more aggravating objectives to deal with in AC2 if you don't know what you're doing. Hire courtesans or thieves, then use your head button to tell them to wait some distance away. Smoke the front of the guard standing by the bank and gentle push through them into the building. When you're done stealing what you want, turn around, lock onto the guards from inside the building, and command your hired faction to distract them. This will let you infiltrate and exfiltrate banks very smoothly. Smoke Bomb has another fun use that you should be aware of, and that's using it as a distraction in itself. Smoking the ground somewhere close to a guard who is out of line of sight will cause him to start building red SSI instantly, and try to investigate what he just heard. This lets you move around him after manipulating him to check it out. This is much more useful in restricted areas, where walking up to a guard to smoke in his face is not viable. Because if you're not in a restricted area, you can just do that. Just walk up to him and drop smoke on him. 3 is Hidden Gun. Hidden Gun is not the first choice people tend to think of when they think of stealth in these games, but it really should be one of your mainstays once you've unlocked it. Hidden Gun has a surprisingly long range, and it can be used to wipe specific targets without detection. This is where I'll explain a basic concept that applies to all of the Assassin's Creed games made in the original engine. So that means AC1, AC2, AC Brotherhood, and AC Revelations all kind of work this way. In these games, your sustainable lock-on distance is greater than your initial lock-on distance. What does this mean? This means you can walk up to a guard, lock on, then walk backwards a fair distance away without your lock breaking. Why is this useful? This is useful because the increased distance you put between yourself and enemies like this means you're too far away for them to hear anything, but you retain your lock on for an actual gunshot. Lock, walk back, fire the hidden gun. People around the victim usually shouldn't hear you. 4. Throwing Knives a similar trick sometimes applies to throwing knives. Just to be safe, walk backwards a bit after locking a guard, but before throwing a knife at them. In AC2 especially, this is good practice, because otherwise they might call out your location or detect you before your knife even hits them. And for missions that instantly fail as soon as a detection ding is heard, this is really useful, even if, you know, even if the guard is dead before they manage to alert anyone else, if the mission is a, hey, you know, do not be detected, then you'll still fail instantly, even though realistically you're still in stealth. 5. Super Blend. Super Blend is an exploit that was discovered by ENX04 and documented on thehiddenblade.com. I'll put a link to this in the description. Super Blend allows Ezio Auditore to become permanently blended at all times, which basically means you have infinite invisibility no matter where you are. And here's how it works. First, blend into a crowd. 
Next, without pulling high profile, because that will break your blend, move from that crowd onto a non-standing surface. So, any point in the world on which Ezio cannot stand upright. Railings, off edges, water, horses, and even the little gondolas that you see in Venice and Forli. Once you're on this non-standing surface, you're invisible. Forever. The catch is that if you step on a surface that causes Ezio to stand upright at any point, your super blend will shatter and you'll be visible again. This makes super blend more of a powerful movement and positioning tactic, rather than something you just stay in all the time. You have to set it up, and you have to babysit it, until the moment that you release it and resume normal gameplay. Obviously, horses and water are both great targets for a super blend, because they allow you to move at relatively normal or even high speed while keeping your super blend online. 6. Understand the blend grace period, or alternatively blend fade time. When you leave a blend group in low profile, you don't immediately become visible again. You'll notice that it takes a moment for the stealth shimmer to fade off of Ezio. The shimmer is one way to see how long it lasts, but another way is to watch the green ring around your minimap. During this blend grace period, you're still blended even though you're not in a crowd anymore. This is useful because especially if you calmly walk without touching fast walk, you have all the time in the world to get from one blend group to another in a restricted area. The best use of this though comes in AC2's final memory, where Ezio has to go through several guarded hallways and one point has a switch by a door, guarded by a soldier facing directly toward you. With understanding of blend fade time, you can just walk right past this guy, no problem. 7. Charge Knives In Brotherhood and Revelations, Ezio can charge throwing knives in stealth, not just in combat. When enemies are hit by a fully charged throwing knife, they will always die, no matter their max HP. This gives you a guaranteed ranged stealth kill, and the only cost for it is knives and time to charge. Better still, this is a way to double or triple assassinate guards safely from a distance without actually putting your body there. 8. Poison Darts in AC Brotherhood, Ezio will meet Leonardo da Vinci at a point in the story, and by taking out his war machines from that point on, you can find his marker on the world map to track him down and get special upgrades from him. These are all qualitative skill unlocks that change what Ezio can do. One of these is Poison Darts, which is the strongest ranged weapon in all of Assassin's Creed, period. Poison Darts are completely silent, their aim line converges very fast, Hitting a guard with them deletes their detection meter and their ability to detect you at all from that point. Guards hit by them will take a long time to die, therefore eliminating an enemy without being suspicious about it. And poison darts can be used to set up instant non-lethal takedowns, because hitting an opponent with your fist while they're poisoned will KO them instantly while leaving them at 1 HP. The game thinks that since the last hit came from fists, you must have knocked them out. Handy. Very, very rarely you'll get an objective to knock someone out without killing them, and this is an efficient way to do that, which also works with regular poison needle, by the way. And in Revelations, you just get poison darts from the start by default, you don't have to unlock them. 9. Throwable Smoke In Brotherhood and Revelations, Ezio can actually quick throw smoke onto guards that he's locked onto. Lock a guard, then tap smoke the same way you would drop it at your feet with an unlock target. This makes stealth and brotherhood even easier because it lets you get through areas that would have been prohibitively difficult to penetrate in AC2. Since you can be farther away or even above a guard now, you can just smoke right onto them from a distance, and then run through as they cough. Be on the lookout for areas you can punch holes in this way. You punch the hole, run through it, and be long gone before it closes back up again. Revelations lets you actually aim a proper throw arc for grenades, a feature which would return in Assassin's Creed Unity, which makes sense since Revelations and Unity were both directed by the same person. 10. Aerostorm Aerostorm's aesthetics and its function are two very different things. I'll explain. See, you would think Aerostorm is, like its name suggests, a huge barrage of arrows and crossbow bolts fired from above or falling from the sky, to strike every enemy around Ezio, right? And you would think, as well, that Ezio needs to have line of sight on them and for them to be out in the open without any roofs over them, right? Both are completely false. Aerostorm is not a shower of arrows. Aerostorm is an area of pure and unbridled death, 
smiting the living hell out of everything around you. All that matters is distance, and even its distance reaches pretty far. Because of this, don't be afraid to use Aerostorm to punch giant holes in certain enemy defenses or just decimate a massive swarm of soldiers for free. Sometimes, it's even sensible to open up an entrance into an area using a smoke bomb, walk some ways into the area, and then arrow storm to make sure as many hostiles are in your radius as possible. Try it. You'll like it. And finally, understanding detection meter thresholds is the last thing I'll talk about, and it's not really numbered because it applies to almost every Assassin's Creed game ever, not just Ezio's trilogy. Whenever the SSI completely fills with yellow and gets even a touch of red, a guard will walk to your current location. This is when you break line of sight and wait for them to walk up to you. If you're hiding around a corner in the older games, this is when you drop smoke and ruin that guard's day. If you're playing the newer games like AC3 and onward, you'll be able to do an actual corner takedown on the guard at no resource cost. This is a universal tech for Assassin's Creed that you'd be wise to remember and deploy whenever useful. It even kind of applies to Origins and Odyssey as well, and it's when you hear the enemy, you know, exclaim a little, or when you see their level number turn into an exclamation mark. So that wraps up this video. If you want to really learn all of these very thoroughly, I recommend doing some homework with this information and trying to do everything I talked about by yourself. Let me know and I will see you guys next time. Stay sneaky.